why? It's not good enough. 1 over n squared plus 1. How does that compare to 1 over n squared? So by the comparison test. Okay, what about number two? Michael, what about number two? What does it look like? It looks like one over n. Is that, if I take n over n squared plus one, and I divide by n on numerator and denominator, I could do the limit comparison, but I thought, my God, you made a mistake here. It's one over n plus one over n. How does that compare to one over n? I'm kind of stuck. Is that, is, is that bigger? It's smaller, so I can't use the comparison test. I could integrate it. By the way, integrals will work, except integrals, as you notice, are not that much fun. But how about the limit comparison test? What about the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n squared plus 1 over 1 over n? Well, that's n over n squared plus 1 divided by 1 over n, which is times n over 1. So it looks like n squared over n squared plus 1. And if I have a million dollars, I don't care about the dollar. It means nothing to me. I'd even give away a thousand dollars if I had a million dollars. So this is one. So then this sequence and this sequence do the same thing because this is the harmonic which diverges by the limit comparison test. The ratio between the unknown to the known is a constant. Can't be infinity, can't be zero. But it means they behave the same way. Does that, it should make sense. They do the same thing. Three, I think I have to do the integral test, and to do that, I have to do integration by parts. I can't find my book. I was going to look it up. But I can't, unless somebody's got a clever way to show that converges and diverges, I'm not even convinced what it does. Because the natural, how does the natural log of x compare to x? It's smaller. So this looks like x over x squared plus 1. But you know what? This is smaller still than x. What would this do? We just did it. This would diverge, right? But will this diverge if it's still smaller than that? I don't know. I could graph it. I could graph it. I think that's the only way of knowing. I'm going to integrate it. I have to do this method called integration by parts. We haven't done it, so. And then I could do the integral. Can I what? Nope. Because I only know this one. That's by the P series. Yes, we have to do the two things together. You, you can't integrate it. It's, it, you know. it's the integral of the log of x over, just let's just do x squared. I think x squared plus 1. Because I can compare it to that, right? Yes. So if you let u equal the log of x, then du is equal to 1 over x dx. And this is going to go from 1 to infinity. So then if I put that in, this is the integral of u dx. So if I take dx as equal to x times du, and I substitute that in there, then that's over x. And then this is x times, I'm sorry, x squared, x times du. So I end up with u over x du. i got to get rid of the x. What's x? I, mean, I know it's integration by parts. If I solve this equation for x, what's x equal to? e to the u. So this would be equal to u over e to the u du. No, but if you don't do them, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> and to integrate that, I need integration by parts. I know I can't do it. The normal use substitution got me nowhere. But later on, when we get to integration by parts, we'll come back to this problem 
and do that. I'm, try, I'm trying to think of the conversions or diversions. I really don't remember. We can't do number three. We can if you looked at it graphically. Did anybody graph it? Did you? Is it converge or diverge? I'm pretty sure converge is also, but they won't ask you something that hard on the test, because that's pretty hard. And I tried to do my integration by parts here, but when I did the regular use substitution, I realized I don't know how to integrate that. Integration by parts is a result of the product rule, but we aren't going to worry about that today. So we're going to skip that one or graph it. You can't compare. You can say that, you know, 1 over n squared plus 1 is less than 1 over n squared. And then if you multiply by the log of n, because I think this is a nice thing to talk about, if I multiply by the log of n, this would be great, but guess what? I have to know if this converges. I don't know if that converges. Because if I multiplied 1 over n squared plus 1, is less than 1 over n squared. If I multiply by e to the n and e to the n, does that converge? No. So I don't know what this does. It has to be a known series. If I could integrate that, then I could do that. Okay. Now, if you can't do number three, that's still number three. So let's go to G for number four. What does this mean over here? Converge. First off, what's your guess? Because this is going to be on the exam. It's a multiple choice. What's your guess? Converges. Because it looks like 1 over n squared. And it's smaller than that. Comparison. I, it, I think, well, if you want to be safe, I would say 1 over n squared converges by the P series. And this is by the comparison test. Because if I add a little bit more to this, the denominator gets bigger. Did I give an advocate? Not at all. Yes, but it's less than. So it doesn't matter. I didn't compare it. Now, yes. Yes, you'll have to, if you use the limit comparison test, you'll have to write limit comparison test. You won't have to write it out. So I always what? You say the limit of the sequence is not zero, therefore it diverges. But if it's zero, you don't have to write that. Do we know nothing? Okay, what about the next one? The next one's tricky. Well, that's not geometric. Oh, because that's not a straight exponential. But if you had this, summation of 2 to the n over 3 to the n, which is this, that is geometric. So this converges because it's geometric. So you can't compare, or can I? Is that oh, is that smaller than that? Yeah, actually it is. So I can do, you guys see why it is? Because your numerator is going to become, well, smaller, and your denominator is going to become bigger. So it clearly is less than this. So by the comparison test. I would have done the limit comparison test. That'll work, too. So if, if we do it visually, Now that we've seen it, here is my series, and I'm just do a uh, zero function just because it represents the series. But this one converges. That's equal to b sub n. Now, a sub n, if a sub n is here, will that converge or diverge? It's tracked. It's smaller than a converging series. So what do you think? It converges. But if I have C sub n, and C sub n is bigger than B sub n, I just don't know. It could. It could. I don't know. Does that make sense? Sam, did that help? So now, let's go do the other one. We know nothing. 
So it only works in certain situations. I'm going to tell you that this theory diverges. And a sub n, I'll keep the same colors in the same place. What do I know about a sub n? It's smaller than a diversion series. Nothing. Can I just do that? And then c sub n is bigger than that. So c sub n would what? Diverge. That's the best. That's the way I do. I draw the picture and go, oh yeah, it's bigger than something that diverges. Well, then that has to be divergent. How? Can, how it doesn't make sense to convert. Okay. Oh, number six. You know what? I didn't know what to do with this at first, so I said, why don't I just write it out? This is the same as this. It's the integral from one to two of 1 over x to the 5 thirds. I so n is equal to 1, so that's 1 and that's yeah. 2. Then n equals 2 to 3, 1 over x to the 5 thirds, dx. Plus, then what's it going to do? 3 to 4 of 1 over x to the 5 thirds, dx. And I'm going to go off to infinity. So this is going to be the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the 5 thirds. Does that converge or diverge? It converges. You still have the p-series test for integrals. It's the same test. As long as 5 thirds is bigger than 1, this converges. For the same reason, the next one will be divergent. This will end up being the integral from 1 to infinity doing the same analysis. And t is less than 1, so it diverges. The second one doesn't. First one does. Okay, good plot. But that's easier. <laughs> so the logs, when you did the logs, that was a platform problem. Okay. Did we get all those done? We did. Turn it over. This is a trick. Are we ready or not yet? Yeah. And then I'm going to give you tomorrow a practice test, uh, some AP questions that aren't on your test, but get you thinking of how they're going to ask the question. It's just a snippet, though, compared to the actual test. But the actual test is with a partner. Okay? Test is Friday with a partner. Multiple choice. No. For the first part of Chapter 8, no. Second part of chapter eight, I think it's all partners as well. Now, do you guys understand why I like to do the partners? It's not for your grade. <laughs> you might think it's for your grade, but it's not for your grade. It's because you talk and argue and think about the mathematics. And even though you think you know it when you walk in, it's when you do the partner test and talk about it. And you don't learn anything from skipping it, do you? Don't slack, your poor partner. <laughs> oh. I don't know, we'll talk about it later. Okay, ready? This is a just a, a visual trick, you guys. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use some color to get the visual thing here. This is one half. Um. This is one half times squared. This is one half times five squared. Now a different color, I'll make it very different. Let's do purple. This is one over two cubed, one over four cubed, one over six cubed. Well, I don't care about the alternating, but I can regroup it as one half plus one half times three squared plus one over two times five squared, etc. 
plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 4 cubed plus 1 over 6 cubed. And for this to converge, both series must converge. What is this? This is 1 half, and then n starts at 1, so 2n minus 1 squared. Does that work? If n equals 1, that's 1 half. If n equals 2, that's 4 minus 1, which is 3. If n equals 3, then that's 6 minus 1, which is 5. It's that one plus, then it's this one. What's this one going to be? If n equals 1, I want a 2. So it's 1 over 2 and what? What power? Okay. Is this going to converge? It's an easy one. Phi times 2 squared. Now, if this next one doesn't converge, I'm done. But you know what? Let's make it simple because we can do a linear comparison. It's also converging because of the P series. One half isn't important, but you get 4n squared. So that's also P series. Now, using that same trick, can you do the next one? Yeah, can you do the next one now? Using the same trick. There are two series added together. Same one with this one and this one. You have to look at it. <laughs> you, you'll know. Why is it divergent? Why did I say that? Because this is 1 plus 1 third plus 1 fifth. That's like the harmonic series, isn't it? So it's 1 over. Now, the odd numbers are 2n plus 1 or minus 1 from the root start. So that would say 1 over n. Doing the log. Do you think the log converges, by the way? I don't think so. It, this would have to be bigger than, the log of n would have to be bigger than uh, n to the first, because it's not. Remember the p-series? So if I have 1 over the log of n, how does that compare to 1 over n? Well, that's a good one. How does the log of n compare to n? I'll put a big question mark there. So the log of n... How does that compare to n? It's less than that. So if I reciprocal it, log of 1 over the log of n is what? What do you think? It's greater than. If you don't believe me, take 2 and 3. Always look at numbers. 1 half is bigger than 1 third. So since this is bigger than 1 over n, and this one diverges, guess what? Diverges by the comparison test. What do you mean if they do opposite things? That's correct. If at least if they for the series a series to converge, all the little series inside of there have to converge. But they're both divergent. This case, but the next case, you have a divergent and a convergent series. Yes. No, no. I said it, for this to converge, this would have to be serious, not greater than. Sorry. I just didn't mark it. Right. All and how if you have two added together here, which I have one plus a third plus a fifth, I'm done. That diverges. I don't have to think about the other one anymore. But does the other one converge? Yes. Because it looks like the P series. Two squared plus one over four squared plus 1 over 6 squared, and that's 1 over 2n. That's how you write an even number. You need to know that. Squared. So maybe write that out. 2n is equal to an even number, because you're going to run into that on the exam. At either 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1, it doesn't matter which one. Those are odd numbers. Interesting little worksheet. There was another one. that one.
Yep, we did. Well, we did do that one. So now you should do the, the blue one. That, and we can do that today and tomorrow. And there's a practice test. I can go get the practice test and give it to you today. But you need to do the ratio test. You need to be proficient, which means you need to do a fair number of the homework problems so you feel comfortable. And I can go up and do our ratio test out of your homework. Yes. Who she did? That's it. This, you guys, is the blue sheet. And you get ratio tests on the back. How do you know which test? When can't you, when can't you use this in a real test? Said she said you. You read the first sentence, then it's. When, can, when you have factual evidence, you can't use it in a real test. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be decreasing. That's a good point. You guys, let's look at the blue one real quickly. Now, you guys, I could just let you suffer and figure this out. But you have all the tests. And as, uh, there's somewhere up on the site, there are a couple, couple things. I don't think I'm logged in. Uh, I have photographs of all the convergence tests that I wrote up on my blackboard a number of years ago. <laughs> That's how long I've been doing this, right? So they're up there. They're tilted. They're just kind of shaking your head or whatever. You can see them. Okay, so all of them are listed there. Um, and then there's the 12 days of convergence test. The words to the song I made up for the, for the 10 convergence test. So on the first day of C, my true love gave to me. That's if the limit of the su sequence is not zero, the series diverges. Still doesn't work quite right, but it does work pretty well. On the second day, my true love gave to me the geometric series. And the limit of the sequence, if that's not zero, the series doesn't converge. Anyway, the words are up on the website if you want to read that. So if that helps you to remember the test, maybe. But that's the order I do that in. So when I look at this, very first question, do I, what do I look at? I look at, it looks like a P-series, doesn't it? I don't do collapsing sum force on test two. It looks like a P series. Because what does this look like? This is, forget the numbers. I don't care about the numbers. This looks like K. This looks like K squared times K, which is K cubed. So this looks like 1 over K squared. Now, I don't know how it compares to that, so I better do a limit comparison test. It's the only way I really know. Now, when you're on the exam, I don't care. I do care on Friday. Because I'm trying to figure out, make sure that you know all your tests. Remember, so it's more than just getting the right answer. But when you take the actual exam, you're going to look at it and say, it looks like that, it converges and be on your way because you have enough stuff to do. But this has factorials, and I don't know how the limit of that, of 5 over n factorial, clearly is going to 0 as n goes to infinity. Okay, it's certainly not geometric. It's certainly not collapsing. It doesn't look like the P-series. Can I integrate a, a factorial? No, can't integrate it. So, can't do that. Um, it's not alternating in sign. 
It already is an absolute value. So the very last test is the ratio. So when you're looking at factorials or something like n to the n or n factorial, those are the ones you can't do any of the other stuff with. This is a, a blue one that I gave you right at the very beginning. Don't know if I have x to. But this is always going to be the ratio test. And this should be, I'm not going to guarantee it, should be on the website. What did you say? Well, is it one of those what? You should be doing homework. <laughs> that's, yeah, but you don't have, well, that, that's, that's the method of mine, yeah. And so when you look at number three, what does it look like? Which, which test? Oh, should we do that one? Okay, does, and it doesn't hurt to do this. Am I recording? Still? Yes. Okay. The ratio test is the limit. <laughs> now I can remember it, and the ratio test is huge on the exam. Yes. Yeah, the more you do, the better you're going to be at this, because there are only so many they can do. So I I find I find them all. Now the ratio test says if the last terms are going to be a ratio of less than one then they're going away fast enough. It's going to convert. If this is greater than one, that means this one is getting bigger than that one. Right? It's growing. So it's not going to convert. So if it's less than one, this is going to be smaller than that one. So the one following your last one is always going to be smaller, smaller, smaller. If it's equal to one, we know nothing. And that happens. So what I want to do is see if it's greater than one. So this was, this is my nth term, so it's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity, and you may have problems with the algebra. This is not enough practice with the ratio test, just to do what we're doing in class. You need to do several of the problems, if not all. Okay, this is n plus 1 factorial. Now I'm going to divide by 5 over n factorial. Well, that's the same as multiplying by n factorial over 5. Yeah. Okay. And positive numbers, so I don't need absolute value. And last year in the exam, they were kind. If you didn't put absolute value in, it was alternating. I've got that problem set it up for you. Th they still gave it to you. I didn't agree, but that's the way it is. <laughs> okay. So I have this. What is n plus 1 factorial? It's n plus 1. That's the first factor. Then the next factor is n. Okay, Eric? Then it's n minus 1. Anybody know what it is? It's n factorial. What happens to your n factorial? They cancel. What's true about that limit? No, the 5 cancel. It's h of n plus 1, which is this, 5 over n plus 1 factorial divided by a sub n, n factorial over 5. These are not going to cancel out. Fives do. And you're going to be left with this. What is 0? Is that less than 1? Well, it's yeah, out of your book. Yes, I want you to look at your book. Your book is hard to read. <laughs> what? Because n plus 1 factorial, let's write it out. The first term is n, not, excuse me, factor is n plus 1. The next one, you subtract 1. Then you subtract 1. Then you subtract 1 again. And this is n factorial. So, you guys, what's n plus 2 factorial? You might run into it. It's n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n, n minus 1. That's n factorial. Because you might run into that. So it's the first one, then you subtract one. And then you subtract one again, and you get n factorial. Or you could even say it's n plus 2 
times n plus 1 times n factorial is n plus 1 factorial. And the only way you get better at it is experience. Practice, experience, all those good things. <laughs> so what about the next one? What is it going to look like? What does the next one look like? It's like k over k squared. So this screen number three looks like what, Sue? T series. I want you to see, you have to look at it and say, which one is it? Pardon? That or the limit, probably the limit comparison, because I don't know how that comparison will look at. This is 5K plus 2. Okay, you guys. I would compare this to 5 over 2k. But the problem is, I don't know how it compares. I don't know if that's bigger than that. So I'm going to have to do the limit comparison. Pardon? I don't know if that's bigger than that. You have to be able to justify it really is bigger than that. So I could do this, divide by k, because I think I can do that, the regular comparison test. That looks like 5 plus 2 over k divided by 2k, which, how does that compare to this? Now it's clear. I divided the numerator by k. So it's 5, because the k is cancel, plus 2 divided by k. Then I divided the denominator by k, because this is equal to what? One. I can do that. How does this compare to that? It's big. This diverges? This diverges by the comparison test. Number four is easy. Do you not understand my dividing by k? This is just a little bit bigger than five. Uh, bigger than five. No, that diverges. That's harmonic. Five halves times one over k. P series. That exponent's one. It's got to be bigger than one. Matt, you should be looking at Matt. <laughs> doing this. I don't know. How about number four? Now let's use all our time today because tomorrow you may have some more questions. Why does it diverge? You took the limit. This is an easy one. Always take the limit of the sequence. No. The sequence converges to one. This equals one, Grant which is not zero. I don't know what the series does, but I know it diverges. This is k plus 2 over k to the what? No. 3 halves. So I'm going to take a little longer to see Therefore, you need to do more problems. Yeah. Is it? No, it's divergent. Divergent. Because this looks like, let's divide by k. Then you'll see it. This looks like 1 plus 2 over k. And then this is k to the 1 half or the square root of k. So if you had to prove it, yeah. It's the com it isn't the P-series. This is bigger than 1 over k to the 1 half. This is the P-series. 
You're right. It looks like the P series, but it isn't. A P series is one over X to the P. That is P series, but this one isn't. It has to be plain old N to the P. Oh, yeah, I'm comparing. Okay, you guys. I can't, I can't hear the question. Sorry. Yeah, this one's by P series. Uh, yeah, comparison test. But you can't say, now on the exam, on the multiple choice part, you will look at it and say, oh, yeah, it looks just like this, mark it divergent, and go on your way. But what I'm looking for is for you to analyze, because they're not going to give you this one series. They're going to give you three series and say one is true, one and two are true, one, two, and three are true, none are true. You know, they're going to do that kind of problem to you. You're going to guess, I want you to, sh you have to show me the work. I just leave the distractors on there because that's the other half. Yeah. Oh, you want to go the other way. I don't know why my table is so close to the front. You would just love to be near me. <laughs> I can't even walk through there. Just asked to do this. <laughs> no, I had no idea. It wasn't a table test. That's the value. No, that's a ratio test. That's not that. No, no, no. No, that's not what that is. 